Stephen Roberts. Hey, McGraw. Um, this one is an interesting one with um, President Trump, and it seems like uh, of all of the controversies, this one's white hot, but it, it really it doesn't change anybody's mind one way or the other. His supporters are still going to love him, and his detractors are still going to be critical of him. Well, I think in many ways that's true. And I think uh, this is one more example of something you and I have talked about many times, that when the president gets in trouble, what he does is stir up his base of support. You, one theory here, this is the bright, shiny object strategy. He's facing two major embarrassments this week. The final uh, uh, decline and burial of the last attempt to repeal and replace Obamacare over the weekend campaign for incumbent Senator Luther Strange in Alabama, who's facing a tough primary tomorrow, which Strange is likely to lose. So you talk about the NFL, which was a dormant issue, uh, and you stir up all this controversy and people forget about your, your political defeat. But the other issue is that uh, Trump has repeatedly returned to a strategy of dividing, not uniting, and encouraging his base. This was exactly what happened after Charlottesville. This is very much in keeping with the same attitude. We did a, a poll at ABC McGraw this morning. We asked, does this president unite the country or divide the country? Two out of three, 66 percent, said this president was dividing this country. That included one out of five Republicans. But this is deliberate. This is his strategy to appeal to his base and, and keep them agitated, keep them supported, keep them angry. And, and, and this is just one more example of that. You know, you mentioned those health care and the, the other primary. They've also got tax reform being rolled out this week. I mean, any can, can this be any more dysfunctional than sort of shoot by the hip, how they try and roll these these things out? It would seem that, the, 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 but this president has not yet grasped what it means to govern the country. He's still in campaign mode. That. Um, appearance in Alabama over the weekend was pure uh, Trumpism on the campaign stump. It was a political rally. It had nothing to do with governing the country. You can stir up your supporters. You can win primaries that way. Obviously, you can win the presidency that way. You can't govern the country that way. The country is about, is about uniting different factions, different regions, different interests, different interest groups. Governing is about coming to a consensus. Governing is about compromising. It's about uniting that dividing. And when you look at the fact that this president, with the sole exception of the approval of Neil Gorsuch to the Supreme Court, doesn't have a single significant legislative triumph to his credit over eight or nine months, you can see that he just hasn't grasped the difference between campaigning and governing. And, and, and Alabama over the weekend was just yet one more striking example of how his instinct is always to divide, not to unite. Everybody wants tax credits. Democrats want tax credits. Republicans want them. Rich want them. Poor want them. Middle class want them. This is a layup. And I still can't figure out why we're these many months into his campaign and they're rolling it out this, this, this week. And no one's talking about the tax cuts. Yeah, well, there are two problems with, 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 with taxes. One is who benefits? You know, and while, yeah, everybody thinks lower tax is a good idea, Democrats and Republicans have very different views about how to do that and, and who should benefit and, and which groups should get the biggest break. The other question is who pays for it? You know, you've got a lot of Republicans who have spent their careers talking about uh, as fiscal hawks, talking about balanced budgets, talking about being fiscally responsible. And now you're talking about tax cuts that by some estimates could be $1.5 trillion, T, trillion dollars, with very little attempt to figure out how to pay for it. So, um, yeah, everybody's for tax cuts, but no one quite agrees who benefits and how do you pay for it. I don't know if you saw over the weekend Steve Bannon was in St. Louis at a Phyllis Schlafly Eagle Forum event. Uh, and he, uh, his comments, he didn't speak very long, but he said that his first priority is to demolish the liberal GOP establishment. If that doesn't show that there is a war within the Re Republican Party, nothing does. Well, yes. And look, uh, one of the reasons why this uh, primary in Alabama, normally no one would pay attention. 
But you have this incumbent, Luther Strange, who's appointed to succeed Senator Sessions, now the Attorney General. He's the favorite of the Republican establishment, uh, Mitch McConnell, and all the Republican money people have backed Strange, who's a loyal supporter of Trump. His rival is a man named Roy Moore, who is a favorite of evangelical Christians, being supported by Bannon, being supported by a lot of other Republican insurgents. The nightmare scenario for the Republican establishment that is if Roy Moore wins tomorrow, and it's quite likely he will, that this will encourage Bannon and other Republicans to challenge uh, uh, Republican incumbents from the right um, and nominate hardline conservatives. And everybody in Missouri knows that when you nominate the Todd Akins of the world, you can hand Democrats a, a victory. There are at least five states. Missouri is only one of five states. Over the last few years, the Republicans have nominated uh, favorites of the hard right who have lost in the general election. It happened in Delaware. It happened in Nevada. It happened in Colorado. Um, and uh, uh, so this is a nightmare scenario. And believe me, the Democrats are cheering on Steve Bannon and that uh, approach to politics. There you go. So Stephen Roberts, best in the business. Thanks for checking in. Have a good week. Okay, Tom. 858, Big 550, KTRS. 